Hello, yeah. Uh, thanks, Matt. I'm Jun Pataleta from the integration team. And um, yeah, in this past three weeks, we have uh, successfully uh, integrated 67 issues and uh, reopened three issues. Um, it's a bit low compared to the um, past sprints because um, given the, the um, lower manpower, um, because I was in the Philippine mood um, and then um, also, we started reviewing uh, improvements after the code freeze, after um, yeah, after the continuous integration period for 4.4. So yeah, and then thanks to the component the, the reviewers um, of these 67 issues that we integrated, there are 26 that um, came from the CLR process. So thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, for this uh, coming Monday, we have uh, minor releases. On the 10th of June, um, we will be releasing Moodle versions 4.4.1, 4.3.5, um, 4.2.8, and 4.1.11. And then um, we have about 90 bug fixes in that will be landing in 4.4.1. So uh, thanks, everyone, for a job well done. Yep, that's pretty much it for me. Over to see me. So um, uh, just a quick update. Um, I already presented myself, so I won't do it again, but um, just a quick update on what's happening on the QA and testing. I usually just mention about the QA automations, but there is something really cool that I have been working on as well, uh, which is the automated testing of Moodle's web installation, which is something at the moment that we don't have testing coverage, like automated testing coverage. Uh, we tested every QA cycle we test the web install to see if everything is working but if like a code breaks the web install in the meantime we will not know or sometimes someone that come some like some dev from the community reports that to us and then we need to go and find out what, what happened so there's um the challenge with that is that um uh, we had in Moodle as so, some of the developers know you need to start behead in order to use it so part of the challenge was to find a way to write a test that don't use moodle steps and go through goes through the web installation like in a, as if it was a different page and step by step until it reaches the end and um finish the installation so i let i will try i'm not sure if i will be able to uh marie um uh, can i share my screen really quickly yeah you should be able to just take yep. over cool so yeah i wrote this uh, plugin which is although it started as a moodle plugin it's completely separated so basically basically i have here a test uh with that goes through the web installation if you look here uh it it puts like uh what what i should verify is things in the web install like the language the confirm confirmation paths and everything until it rent reaches the end like um with the admin welcoming the admin um and i also have something that was cool to learn about which is the github workflows so i have created this workflow which tells like on which environment my script to run the database uh the php and everything set up everything um clone the moodle repository at the moment it's fetching this specific specifically branch because my web installation automation already found a bug so it's currently being peer reviewed but um it goes through the process and in the end it runs the behatch test which the one i showed earlier um and what it does whenever I push something on my repository, it will trigger one uh, GitHub build, uh, GitHub Actions build. So it basically, it does everything that is doing uh, on this script. It does here. So as you can see, it set up the, the database, the PHP, uh, it clones the Moodle repository, and in the end, it runs the behatch test. So it goes through each step, and in the end, it says whether if the test passed it or not. Um, and yeah, in the case, 
if something goes wrong, let's say it will show here in the GitHub Actions page. Like in this case, as you can see, I was doing some tests and everything, so it was failing and it will show like this. But uh, the idea is that uh, over time we will integrate this um, feature with RCI infrastructure. So we know exactly whenever something gets breaks the web install, we will not be notified in the integration team. And that, that is something really cool that I have been working on, and I thought it would be cool to share with the team as well. So if anyone let, let, have any questions, please um, let me know. Hi there. Um, my name is Andrew Lyons. I'm the principal uh, architect for Moodle LMS uh, in the platform team. And uh, today I'll be giving a brief developer experience update. Um, starting with uh, just a, we had a, a DX update in our developer meeting on the 24th of May. Um, I need to update the slides that have been off some of last week, but those will be up there shortly. Uh, just a reminder again that we did uh, announce a change to Moodle's versioning. Uh, so Moodle 4.5 will be the, the last of the old versioning formats. After Moodle 4.5, we will have Moodle 5.0. And that will go through to Moodle 5.1, 5.2, and ending on Moodle 5.3 LTS before we go to Moodle 6.0 and so on and so forth. Um, there's a, a discussion there on that QR code at the top right. Um, sorry, I did mean to add the link to the slides, but I forgot. But if you view the slides, that, that is a link. I just didn't add it as a uh, as text as well. Uh, there's also a related change to the deprecation policy which is simply, essentially will simplify how we do that deprecation. So instead of having a rolling deprecation, when we get to Moodle 5.0, uh, anything that was deprecated in or before Moodle 4.4 will be removed. When we get to Moodle 6.0, anything deprecated in or before Moodle 5.2 will be removed. The other uh, and bigger change or more, more impactful change for most people uh, is MDL 81125 which is a change to the tooling for upgrade note management. For those who have developed with Moodle, uh, you'll probably be familiar with our upgrades.txt files, which are littered all over Moodle. I think there's 127 of them. Uh, and the issue we've had with those has been uh, multifold. Um, we, they don't exactly allow for good discoverability of changes because each one only contains the relevant changes that it's uh, the component it's related to and there's no standardization of them. They're absolutely massive documents uh, and they're not very easy to, to, to find things in. Uh, they also subject to a lot of uh, merge and uh, change conflict whenever you need to rebase it, whenever it's integrated or changed in any way. So we've introduced some new tooling uh, in MDL 81125, which landed two weeks ago uh, to manage upgrade notes. And um, the details of that are on the next slide. So next slide, please, Marie. There's a very brief demo. Um, so essentially, we have a, a new tool uh, that's written using JavaScript. It tries to give some information on who should be writing these, what the target audience is, and why. And then it gives you a guided uh, UI for how to create those, asking you for some useful information like the tracker number, the, the component that it is that relates to the type of the change. Uh, so that's um, using the keeper change log types, improved, removed, changed, added, or deprecated from memory. And then you can also uh, write a message and add uh, user edit if you want. Uh, and that puts that into an intermediary format in YAML, which you can see there. Uh, that can be edited uh, and maintained, and it should be uh, safe to change conflict because it's uh, the naming of it includes both the date and, and the time and the issue number. We also have a separate tooling which is automatically run uh, during the integration um, re release process each week, which essentially generates uh, a new upgrade to markdown file. Um, here's an example of the summary version of it, which lists all of those changes for all of the uh, components in one file. And also we have a separate ones for every single component where there are changes for as well. So people can choose to see how they uh, want to view those. And if you move on to the next slide, Marie, there are some links there for those. There we go. Uh, so there's some, uh, an example of one of those. Uh, again, there's a QR code relates to the, uh, the link above. Um, 
So that, that's now generated automatically by our release process. And then on the right hand side, we have the documentation for how to write those release notes. And that also gives general advice on how to write good release and uh, upgrade notes, uh, which are targeting developers and reminding people who the, the target audience of those changes are. And it's not just we, we did these things, it's we did these things uh, and you're, you're writing for the developers in the community who are wanting to write a plugin using this thing and what they these are the things that they need to know. So it's hopefully a really good improvement for developer experience, both in, for those people writing these changes, but also for those people who are writing plugins in our community and trying to find out what they need to do to update their plugins.